what is good acting for you? What makes it so? I I, I was act, act talking mm. to another actor recently. I don't know if you're familiar with Cedric Gagel. Have you heard of his channel? Oh, sounds really familiar, but I don't think I know he, he's him. He's another YouTuber that does, but he has a, he directed a movie that's on Amazon. So like, oh, that's cool. yeah, it's pretty wild. So, so he's an actor director. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, that's cool. So um, his name is Cedric Gagel. So you should check out his stuff. Um, and Definitely. He's, he's out here on YouTube and stuff. But um, I was talking to him. I'm like, so, and and I had recently seen this movie where like my wife was like, oh, this is really, this was a really great movie. And I was like, so I was like, mm-hmm. okay, let me go watch it. So. I she loved it and I was like I liked the movie and the concept was good but I was like the acting was kind of subpar. Now obviously mm. quality is subjective. My wife didn't even notice. I obviously noticed. But so I was asking him what do you, what defines good acting? And I'm curious and he gave me his answer and I'm curious to know what you mm. define as good acting. Or or what I makes have, good acting? I have the voice of my drama teacher okay. from back home it. like resonating in my head and he he is this like absolute like amazing drama teacher back home he trained in um russia and and east asia with like the stanislavski kind of followers i know if you like this is very technical like drama stuff but it's basically like the the birthplace of of drama um and he has that theory there's kind of a mix between european theory and u.s theory because i know U.S. actors are more about like emotional like memory, right? So drawing from your own experiences, mm. and then stage acting is more about kind of the playfulness of acting, kind of playing with the role and going into that like childish mindset of I'm just going to pretend that I'm this character and embody this in more of like a playful way than drawing back from my own experience because I feel like if you rely on on your memories and your emotional kind of baggage to find that. Um, that moment for the character and you're doing stage you're going to either lose that because it's not going to be sad for you anymore or, or funny or, or happy or anything or you're going to drive yourself crazy um thinking about that every night wow uh, so i think the most important thing for me is kind of finding that point where i feel like the actor is having fun with the role um and where you can see that they're playing with the role in a way that is not an extreme. I really like it when a character is written in a way where you not do or to do what they actually want to do. And my drama teacher used to say that nobody does what they want to do because you have two kind of main drives as a as a human being. You either want to, you know, get rid of someone instead of, you know, using a, a worse word, you want to kill them, or you want to fall in love with them for lack of a, of a worse word so you either like love them or you hate them sure. that's kind of the main thing and and as we're animals but we're social animals so we kind of restrict those impulses so when you can see the character kind of struggling to do what they want to do even if they're just like having a cup of coffee they're not saying anything a primal instinct is there within them that they're repressing because of society right and the fact that they're not chimpanzees or or lions so i think when you can see a character that's written in the way where there's that always feels like there is something bubbling beneath the surface and you feel like this is gonna this is gonna explode at any moment and it doesn't and it doesn't and it doesn't and you're just more and more intrigued i feel like i find it way more interesting to see a character holding back tears than crying like a lunatic i feel like to me that kind of bubbling through and feeling like the actor is playing that like kind of middle ground where they're about to like you know go crazy and then do something ridiculous but they're not they're holding back i feel like that tension is really interesting to me um and i think there is a lot of like really like nuanced craft in that and it takes a really good actor not to take that to the absolute extreme and and be like telenovela you know like super telenovela, exactly. there's that latin accent nobody does that <laughs> yeah that's the accent here you can't say telenovela like i can't well, do that so I, i'm like 85 percent bilingual like speaking spanish but like yo hablo español como un gringo like i speak like with yeah. such uh american but you roll your ass yeah but you your, yeah, but, that's really but good. i still speak like a gringo gringo <laughs> whatever you know what i mean very good <laughs> But no, I couldn't agree more. That's very, very fascinating what you're saying about, you know, your perspective on good acting. But what, And it kind of plays into what Cedric was saying. He's saying, like, good acting versus, like, 
relatively amateur acting is like amateur actors think that they need to act where it's like they, yeah. they actually overact and that's what, what yeah. you notice you know and he's like and, and yeah. in real life like we don't we don't overact we don't do that yeah no. so he's like really good actors it's like they're just being normal essentially and it's like yeah. and it's so funny it's like oh you're right that's like we don't when i sip a, I think sip a cup of coffee yeah. i'm like mm, you know it's like we don't do it exactly but like that's that i feel like you always have something in the back of your mind as a human being you're never thinking of nothing and if you are thinking of nothing you're actively thinking of nothing there, there there's never like you're never dead in your brain sure. Unless you're even if even when you're asleep, I don't believe sure. that you are. So I feel like there always needs to be something that's going on. So even for like the that's smallest auditions that I've ever had, I kind of sit down. I have a little notebook where I write things about character. So even if it's a really small character, I always like to think of a name for them if they don't have one. Think who their mom is, who their father is, who their family is, what they like. Even if it's something that never comes up in the like material that I'm I'm gonna perform, it's always interesting to know what your character is like. And I feel like it's really similar to when you were a kid and you pretended, like I used to pretend that I was a spy <laughs> with my friends like spies. I'd be like, that is more similar to yeah, acting yeah. than what people think acting is. It's just playfulness, right? It's just like, I am a spy and I am a spy, but then my mom calls me to lunch and I'm not a spy anymore. Yeah. So you have to be able to you? have that break between one or the other. But I think that that's how a actors like really struggle. And I really admire actors like like Daniel Day-Lewis. I'm not going to say that he's a bad actor. He's amazing. But he's method. He's so about method acting. And I think that is great for people who can withstand that. I think that would that would make me, that would destroy sure. me to do, to be in the character all the time. I think that'd be a bit intense. Yeah, that's um, fascinating. Yeah, that is I completely so agree with what Cedric was saying. Yeah, it's it's all about that uh, natural kind of quality Absolutely. to the, the performance.